Hello, my name is Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority, and today we're going to be reviewing the Bote HD Arrow. We'll be going through all the pros, cons, everything that's included, and how the on-water performance is. Stay tuned. As we look inside the package, we've got the front pocket, a few accessories that we'll be going into, as well as there is the pump, paddle, and the board. So let's get unpacking and see what we get. So here's the package unfolded. We're just gonna fill it up with an electric pump. And there is paddle, pump, etc. bag. I don't really use manual pumps anymore because of back problems and whatnot, but more than happy to use electric pump. And in fact, I actually highly recommend it. Who is the Bote HD Arrow for? Now the Bote HD Arrow is for somebody who craves stability on their board, which is great for activities such as fishing. There's a lot of accessories that actually help uh, anglers' lives be a little bit easier. It's also a great board for families. So you can have a kid, dog on there, or you could probably even have two people sitting and paddling Maybe even standing actually, as the weight capacity will probably support it. And finally, the board is also really good for excursions. So if you look at the bungee deck webbing here, there's two rows at the back, three rows at the front. You can see this is a rather large bungee deck webbing area right here compared to what you'll find with a lot of other recreational all around boards. So that's also a really good feature Bolt it has. The board can also be used as a kayak hybrid. It's got these little loops. There are D-rings right here on the sides of the board. That can be used either for a shoulder strap or a kayak seat that you just put right in the middle. It also has a little attachment here for a paddle sheet, which we will install in a little bit here. It also features rack mounts, so for fishing racks, uh, sliding fishing holders, or even as a bucket holder. And these D-rings here can be used to hold a bucket, so you can be sitting on your bucket while you're fishing, etc. It also gives you a little bit extra viewpoint if you want to stand on it. Now we'll go through the specs of the Bote HD Arrow. So the Bote HD Arrow is 11 feet 6 inches long. 34 inches wide. It has a 315 maximum weight capacity, 315 pounds I should say. And the board is a little bit of a big boy at 30 pounds. Now the board is made of Bote Arrow, which is the dual fusion composite with composite drop stitching. So this is partially why the board is a little bit heavier. In my mind, it can be used for solo or tandem capacity, and it can be used for recreational purposes or fishing. You may be able to do yoga as well, but there's a lot of stuff on deck that might get in the way of your feet. So what are my overall on-water impressions? Oh, look at the herring just over there. Uh, the overall on-water impressions of the Bote HD Arrow. Um, I like it. It definitely, for me, it kind of feels a little bit more sluggish to paddle. So from a recreational standpoint, which I'm used to, maybe it's not my top choice of board, but I can see for bigger, bigger guys and gals, or even anglers, them really liking this board because it's heavier and it has more mass it feels more stable and you're not going to be bullied as easily by the wind other elements etc so i'm trying to look at it from their perspective and i think that this is a, probably out of the boards i've tested this would be the pick my pick for a fishing board for a recreational board it's decent you know um, it is a bit heavy, 30 pounds, not exactly a lightweight board, 
but I do appreciate all the accessories that it has, like the Magnapod holder, the little paddle sheath holder, which I think is pretty convenient. And then also the um, Bote's little own version of the Scotty mounts in the back where you can have like racks, fishing racks, rod holders clipped on, etc. The board definitely feels solid and rigid, like I'm bouncing on it and it stops, so that's a good sign right there. Pretty good rigidity. I mean, yeah, even for those that maybe don't have the best balance, this is a pretty solid board just to hop on and have the confidence to actually stand up on. I do feel, I'm kind of paddling against the wind right now and I can kind of feel it's a little bit less swayed by the wind compared to some of the lighter boards like the Nixie Monterey. So I think things like that, fishermen should definitely think about. Now, Bote, their specialty is fishing boards. So, and the HC Arrow is sort of like a combination of a fishing board hybrid with a little bit of recreational use. Um, if you want to go full on and just get like a full on fishing board and just go all out, I'd say get the Rackham HD Arrow. But yeah, overall, I'm impressed with this board. Stability is the thing that stands out the most. I do like the add-on features that are in it. It is a bit heavy. Um, like when you're trying to really motor, you don't get as powerful strokes. I also kind of noticed that I had to tighten the, the paddle lever a little bit before going out because it wasn't gonna, if I just went out as it was, it wasn't going to stick and I'd be having a little bit of a worse time. So overall, yeah, this is a pretty solid board. Um, it just depends who you are. If you're a smaller paddler, I'm not sure I would take this board because it's heavy and it might feel like a bit too much and it'll probably get in the way of your ideal paddle stroke as well. Like you'll have to angle the paddle a little more like that. But for taller guys or heavier, heavier dudes and gals, I'd say this is a great board. Now we're gonna go through nose to tail specs of the Bote HD Arrow. Starting at the nose here. So you can see we have a towing D-ring, front handle with padded neoprene, it's nice in the hands. It's got the sheath holder. Followed by a big area of bungee deck webbing, which if you're into paddleboard camping, excursions, etc., pretty good little feature to have. Followed by the deck, so there is Bote's famous Magnapod, which is basically if you buy one of their Magnapod drink holders, you can put it on there and it just sticks right onto it. So you don't have to worry about waves, weak waves knocking your drink out, which I know is very devastating. So it's a pretty cool little feature I like. It also features the straps, the D-rings for kayak seat or shoulder strap. There's the middle handle. And then there's some D-rings here, right um, at the back for a cooler. So this can hold a cooler cooler. You just strap it in there. These are the rack mounts. So if you want the cooler rack mount, you want a regular fishing rack mount, or another variation, Bolte has a few of them that you can look through and purchase on their website. Then you have the rear bungee storage area followed by the valve and the rear handle. Now interestingly enough, there is no rear D-ring for the leash, which I find kind of interesting. 
but at the same time I wouldn't say it's a massive deal breaker because you can always just loop it onto the handle. Now we're just going to do the nose to tail specs in the back here. Here's the nose. Also I should note that the board is only inflated to 3 psi for demonstration purposes so if you look at some bumps and whatnot it's because it's not fully inflated because I'm not I've already used it. You can see the nice little Bote logo there. I think that's a really nice touch. Let's go down. They have a three fin setup. So one of the things I'm not the biggest fan of is that this is a slide in fin. And I had to really kind of force it in there, which, which I think if a fisherman if you're a fisherman and you have a mallet, it's a good idea to just use that to slide this in. I prefer if this was a US fin box, personally. And it does have these little two, two and a half inch side fins, which I, in my opinion, they don't really do too much. They just actually take up room for the board. If Bote really wanted this board to track, they would use five inch side fins. I feel, that it takes up less room and they're detachable. You could even do the clip-on system like Bluefin or iRocker does. You can see there's the squared tail, which helps make this board give you a little bit of that extra stability. So now we're gonna get into the accessories that the Bote HD Arrow comes with. So installed here with some screws is the paddle sheet which you can use to rest your paddle. I did a demonstration of it on the on water performance video. Followed by the bag, which is made of um, heavy duty vinyl. It's water resistant, but not waterproof. So don't put it on the board and expect everything will be very dry if it gets submerged. Over here is the rack mounts. Now, these go into the slide in um, holders right over here. Followed by the strap. This is the three piece adjustable paddle. So, this is made of fiberglass and ABS plastic for the blade. Finally, this is the single chamber pump. Now this is the Bote bag, which you've kind of opened up a little bit, so that makes opening it a bit easier when I have the camera in my hand. So this bag is 36 by 17 by 13 inches. And it's actually a fairly heavy bag, like compared to a lot of the other bags that I've used with ISUPS, this is on the heavier side, if not one of the heavier ones I've used. Now this is because of its heavy duty vinyl material. So let's just open this up a little bit. So as you can see, there's the front pocket. I usually store the rack mounts in there, the paddle sheath. You can also put the pump in there too. And this is the front pocket. So it has the little strap for the board inside to keep it snug. This is the back of the bag. It's got some padded straps, padding in the back. Personally, I wouldn't lug this backpack on heavy distances because the straps do eventually kind of dig into your shoulders a little bit. I would say for this specific bag, just have just put it to the shore like have your car within you know a few hundred meters of of the water and just grab it and go so you can see as well that they have the waist straps as well as a little chest strap to help secure it on the side there's some loops to kind of help you grab it there's some clips as well, which are handy.
the bag is definitely different. I'll give them that. But I do find with that heavy vinyl material, it does make it a bit heavier. So if you're a smaller person especially, you may need some help with the bag. Now some improvements I would like to see with this bag is perhaps wheels. There's other ISUP manufacturers doing that and that makes the bag a heck of a lot easier to transport. Especially with this heavier package as well. This is the Bolte paddle. It comes with the package. So it has a fiberglass shaft. And it has an ABS blade that's in a teardrop shape. So one of the interesting things that Bolte did is that they made the paddle adjustable to what the actual paddler's height is. So you can see it's actually fairly accurate. So you can see if you put it to let's just say six foot one, it's just about where my height is. Now personally, I would have liked to see them have a range where it's about a shack above so that the paddler knows exactly what they want, but I still think this is a really cool feature. The paddle goes from 68 inches to 86, and it weighs 1.8 ounce. This is the Bote HD Aero Pump. It's single chamber, double action. Now you can actually change the action based on this little switch here. So on this side is double action. If you switch it to the other side, it's single action. So what that basically does is double action, you get air out of the up and down stroke, while single action is just on the down stroke. So you'd want to do double action to about, I'd say 10 PSI, and then start doing single action on the downstroke, which makes the pumping a lot easier. I suspect that, now I don't know for sure, but this looks like the same company that does Nixies and Thirsal Surf's pumps. But this one is a single chamber, while the other ones they have is a dual chamber. See the back gauge as well so it's nice light and transportable which is pretty good and it fits in the package pretty well even if you have less than a perfect fold with the board now let's talk a little bit more about this fin setup so this fin actually is sort of like a hybrid racing fin and it has is about 10 inches which is bigger than normal 9 inch dolphin fin so, as you can see, it has a bigger surface area, which will help the board track, make it feel a little bit more stable as you're doing each stroke. Now, once again, as I mentioned, the side bite fins, they don't really do too much, and you can test that out yourself whenever you remove the center fin. So to secure the fin, you just slide it in, and then, you buckle it in by just putting this guy right in there, like that. Overall though, I thought it was actually, I did actually like this fin, but something I would change is I'd make it a US fin box so that if you wanted to change the style of fins, you can instead of just dealing with that slide in capability. And whenever it's warm out, I also find that it's a bit harder to slide the fin into that fin box as well compared to a US fin box where you just screw it in. Just do a quick little overview of the repair kit. So you can see inside there's a valve wrench, there's two different colored squares, there's blue and white, and then there's also glue in it, which is actually pretty handy as some manufacturers don't actually include glue, which is surprising enough. But good for Bote for including it. On to the likes and dislikes of the Bote HD Arrow. So there's a lot of things to like about this board. If you're an angler and you like a lot of add-on accessories, this is one of the better picks for you. Um, board is very stable in the water. Maneuvers well, tracks pretty good too for its fin setup, which I appreciated. The length is good for extra stability. It has squared off tail, which definitely helps with that as well. 
and you can add, for example, cooler coolers, you can add fishing rod racks, you can add stuff right in the storage here. Also really like this bigger bungee deck storage, even, for example, the paddle sheet, you can just put it in there and it stays. Now onto the things that I thought the Bolte HD Arrow could have improved on. Now I personally would have liked if the board was a little bit more lightweight. Um, that is the main thing because in terms of hauling the board in the bag, it's a pretty heavy package at 48 pounds total uh, carrying weight. And also paddling the board, it takes a little bit more effort whenever you're paddling it because the board weighs 30 pounds. So you have to put a little bit extra length into the stroke, which isn't really ideal when you're in tides per se. The Bolte HD Arrow comes with a two year limited warranty, 30 day return policy. So it doesn't include improper use, scrapes from elder. Uh, objects, you know, like rocks, etc. Doesn't include misuse, um, you know, let's just say you put the wrong PSI in there, etc, etc. And you also have to include photos of the damage for the warranty to be um, rewarded. The return policy is 30 days, but unfortunately you do have to pay a 20% restocking fee with any return. Returns also have to be in like new conditions, so they can't be all dirty. You know, it can't just come from the ocean and it's all brown and muddy. And the person who is returning the board is responsible for the shipping costs. Is the Bote HD Arrow a good buy? I would say yes. Now, it's a great buy for those who want a very stable paddle board to paddle, as well as especially for anglers that want a board that has a lot of add-on capabilities such as cooler coolers, fishing racks, paddle sheaths, etc. It's also a good board for bigger slash taller folks like people I'd say over six foot, over 180 pounds. This is actually a really good board even if it's a first board for you to just make sure you get your feet in the water. For smaller people I'd look for one of the other bolt in models, like maybe the Wolf, just because this board is a bit heavy. But nonetheless, I think Bolte designed a really good board here. Highly recommend it. This is Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority, and thanks for watching.